Hello everybody, Walters954 from salesforcementor.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to send emails to related list records. So let's say that you are on your opportunity and you have contact roles enabled. All of those different contact roles you can send an email alert to. This is different from using your standard email alerts because they require one particular record. You are not actually able to send those emails out to related lists. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Before we jump into things, make sure to like and subscribe so I know that you like this particular type of content. Also ring that notification bell so you don't miss anything new. Big shout out to my newest patrons, Uzma, Cyprian, Sam, and Adrian. Thank you all so much for supporting Salesforce Mentor. So now let's jump into that flow. Setting the stage a little bit here, we are going to be working off of an opportunity and contact roles. So we have two contacts in here, John Smith and Community Test, both which have two different email addresses. And we want to trigger an email alert anytime the opportunity stage is changed. And normally when you're using email alerts, you'll need to provide one specific email address or contact that's related to the specific uh, workflow that you want to use. But in this case, we want to just send that same email alert to all of those users that are related to the opportunity or any record that you're using. So we're going to go check out the email alerts that we have. I already created this one in advance opportunity contact roles email. We can see that the recipient is actually a related contact and the object is the opportunity contact role. The child record will need to be the main object of the email alert that you are using. This is because that's where you want to pull all the fields from and the relationships from. You can't have it on the main opportunity because it won't know the individual fields and information for each of the child records that you have in here. I'm doing a quick update to our email template. What I'm going to try to do is bring in the opportunity fields and some of the other related fields. So opportunity contact role is a junction object between contacts and opportunities. We know that we can bring in the opportunity contact role ID, but let's see if we can automatically bring in the contact first name and the opportunity stage. This is something that I'm trying out. There are ways around this if this relationship does not work in grabbing the fields that we need. So stay tuned for that information on how to grab those values. Next, let's actually create the flow that we want to use. There's a ton of different options in here, but we're going to be using an auto launching flow. You can use a record trigger flow, but in this instance, we're probably going to call this from a process builder because it's a little bit easier to do things like is value changed in process builders currently. Now let's create a new variable, call that contact roles. And this is going to hold all of the different contact roles that we get passed over from our specific opportunity. We're going to make sure to select the data type as record. The object is going to be opportunity contact roles. Do a quick search for that. Make sure that it's available for input and allow multiple values, AKA a collection is selected. So now we have a place to store the different values when we send them through all of our different contact roles. We then need to loop over each of them. This is why we are using a loop logic element. And for the collection variable, we're going to use our brand new contact role collection. If you're unfamiliar with some of the new loop changes, we no longer need to create an individual loop variable. One will automatically be created for us, which is really nice. Next, we're going to go ahead and select an action component and look for our email alert that we created previously. Type in the name of your email alert. Here we go. Opportunity contacts role email. Now that we have that selected, we'll need to put in a label and enter in the record ID. 
So this comes from our loop variable and the record ID, if we remember from the original email alert, that is related to the opportunity contact ID, not just the contact. Now let's start to wire everything up from start to the loop. And then from the loop to our send email action, we're gonna do this for each item in the collection. And super important here, we need to go from our action back to our loop because this will continue to go in a loop. It'll iterate, send the email out, and then go back to the next item, send the email to the next one, and continue on until the list is complete. There are some things like email limits that we'll need to worry about if a lot of these are going off. Depending on how many licenses you have and your org size, you may have different limits. So let's jump back really quickly into a process builder so we can initiate this process. We have an auto launching flow, which needs to be triggered by something. In this case, I want to use a process builder. I have this one already on stage change. Let me see if there's anything else here. Uh, nope, let's just use this one and clean out this post Slack stuff that we have in here. Go ahead into our action, call our flow, fill out all of the relevant information, now, once we jump down into our flows, since our flow is active, the auto launching email alert flow is here. For the flow variables, we're seeing the one that we had as an input variable, the contact rows collection. For the value, we need to select the opportunity contact roles. This is the relationship down into the child records. Go ahead and save that process builder and activate it so we can get to testing this out. Now, any time we make a change to the opportunity stage, it should take all of the different contact roles, send it to that flow we just created, which will loop through all of the contact roles and send an email out. Let me sneak over here and try to bring my emails over because I don't want to show you all, all of my emails, but we can see here that I got an email sent to Warren plus two. All the values were not set properly. We got the contact role ID, but the stage didn't come through. And what's the point of using this if we can't use some of the related fields that we need to get the information from? Just pulling up the second email really quickly here. Now let's jump to the email template so that we can get an idea of how to bring in those contact fields or opportunity fields. When we look through the merge fields that were provided, we see that we don't have an option. And before, when we use the contact first name to try to get the references, they did not appear. The solution around this is to actually go ahead and create some new fields that are formula fields that we can reference. So for the opportunity contact role, we'll need to go in, create a formula field, call it first name, go through the relationship and bring in the first name field from our contact. Uh, the same thing if we wanted to do opportunity stage. Hopefully you don't have a lot of different fields that you want to pull in, but for child relationships that are not master record detail, this is what you're gonna have to do to bring in the values. For master record detail objects, you can actually just call the relationship directly. You won't have to go through this whole mess of creating a bunch of formula fields or anything like that. So I would highly recommend making sure you have a master record detail for the relationship when you're trying to do some sort of automated email send like this. Now that we have our fields created, let's go ahead and bring in those new values from the opportunity contact roles. We can see our new custom fields for first name. And all we have to do is go ahead and replace the old values that we had in there. Don't forget to hit save. And now let's head over to our opportunity, change the stage again and see what our emails are looking like. Gonna do a quick cut on here just so that I'm not showing you all my emails and I'm gonna bring them up here. We can see now that we are getting the values we're looking for for stage and first name. 
Here's our second contact role, contact John, and we can see that it was super simple. Now any new contact roles are also going to have an email alert sent out to them. No need to add any additional functionality. As long as they're in the child relationship, they're going to get that email sent out to them, which is really cool. Thank you all so much for watching. If this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you never miss out on any of the videos that I'm releasing. Huge shout out to my newest patrons. Thank you all for so much for supporting Salesforce Mentor. I'm Walters954 and remember, I believe in you.